Hello and a very warm welcome to another episode of The Ladies Club, your leading women's talk show here in Mzanzi. My name is Bailen Kirtley and what a pleasure it is to be with you. My dear Mekela Perl, I'm Hala Nano Larna Lera to hang in The Ladies Club. I'm going to make a little bit of a video. I'm going to make a little bit of a video. I'm going to make a little bit of a video. Thank you for tuning in as we chat to Trailblazers, the game changer. I'm going to make a little bit of a video. I'm going to make a little bit of a video. I'm going to make a little bit of a video. I'm going to make a little bit of a video. I'm going to make a little bit of a video. I'm going to make a little bit of a video. I'm going to make a little bit of a video. So our topic today focuses on women who are breaking the mold in male-dominated space. Even with the advancements that women have made throughout history, very few ladies have risen to the top of sports organizations. This is a clear indication that the battle is not over mm. yet. Today we're going to be chatting to a lady who has managed to break down those barriers, break through the glass ceiling, and has found the place in the male-dominated sports industry. Absolutely. But before we get going with our chat, we'd like to set the tone with an inspiring coach, Mansuaka Jone Ari Atsuahu Mampele Rampele Ari, the double jeopardy of being black and female in a racist and sexist society may well make one less afraid of the sanctions against success. A non-subservient black woman is by definition a transgressive. She is the ultimate outsider. Do you find that level? Yes, always. It, 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 it resonated with me. Hence, I thought if, if, if I'm looking at the screen, I, it's not really coming out exactly how I've been internalizing it and but this it says there's so much truth in being always the outsider as a black female it's almost racist do you not think though that just generally there is this idea that women i mean yeah. of all races they have to play a subservient role in society yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's something that obviously i mean the the color i can't take from the quote but that's mm. something that i really do take from the quote is this expectation of subservience that women are expected to play in society so let's tell the viewers a little bit about uh, dr mampele rampele uh, she's had a celebrated career as an activist medical doctor academic businesswoman and political thinker wow what a lady she certainly mm. is and i know that we've spoken so much about her you know I love Absolutely. that one quote of hers about teaching young boys to deal with empowered women. Absolutely. She has, of course, received numerous national and international awards, acknowledging her scholarship and leading role in spearheading projects for disadvantaged people in Monamo, Africa, Bura, and elsewhere in the world. All right, we're about to go on a quick break. But before we do that, let's take a look at what's making news when it comes to women's sport. All right, uh, plenty that's been making news this month, uh, Valen. Uh, considering that uh, the month of June is where we saw the representation of Banyan at the World Cup. And you know what the sad part is, uh, before we go any further, is that the people don't understand the pedigree of opponents we had in that group. Absolutely. You're playing number two in the world and you only get beaten 4-0. <laughs> and these are people that are getting paid week in, week, week out, playing for the likes of Manchester United, Chelsea, City. Yeah, I mean, uh, Portia Medisa said it. I mean, she's the most prolific striker that the nation has, male mm. or female. And she said, you know, let's not expect too much of them actually going to the World Cup. They have qualified. It's the first time they've ever qualified. Yeah. The fact that you're going to a World Cup is no small feat. Absolutely. And I think that too often we, we detract away from that. Tembi Khatlana getting a historic goal at mm. the World Cup. I mean... We've had Bafana Bafana going to tournaments and not coming back with a single goal. Absolutely. So I think that we really should celebrate our women and what they were able to do. And that match against uh, China People's Republic, I mean, a team that has been represented so many times at the FIFA Women's World Cup and we only got beaten 1 0. And yes, I say that because what an amazing performance from Kaylin yeah. Swart. Absolutely. I mean, it's really an incredible feat. So I am today saluting mm -hmm. Banyana Banyana for an incredible uh, job well done at this year's World Cup. Uh, really, girls, you've uh, gone out there and you have represented us well. Looking forward to what we can do further when that league uh, resumes and begins. Let's take a quick break. We'll focus in on our game changer when we return. Stay with the Ladies Club. Welcome back. And so we hear now all around the area to hang lama from Mahadi. Ellen, the ladies clap on the mokana. Ellen, you're moving. Mu emo tlere tlotswa la pele. Kadi puts arona huba ne ritswere game changer. Yeah, the game changer. Yes, let's tell you about our game changer because we're joined in studio by the head of stakeholder relations and communications at the Premier Soccer League, Connie Motshumi, and she is our game changer today. 
Welcome to the Ladies Club Lounge. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Valen and Lebo. What a position you have in the Premier Soccer League. Um, an incredible one. You've been there for seven years. How did, all, how did it all come together, Connie? I was headhunted and I was asked, please, can you come and help us with formulating communication strategies and um, head up as the equal relations division. So the department didn't exist prior to my arrival. Um, what it did, it predominantly was focusing a lot on the fixtures and announcement of fixtures and what is really going on in the field of play, which is what people want to know. Mm. However, the dynamics of the business that we operate in today demands that you understand your stakeholders and their, their interests, but equally so how they impact on your business. But also, you've got to influence whatever decision that gets taken by the regulators or the government as well. When you were growing up, did you have an interest in sport? Not really. Normal uh, sport at school, as in you do your tennis, swimming, hockey. Mm. I didn't play football. We didn't mm -hmm. have that. I was at a convent, so that's a different lifestyle. But um, I understood the importance of football, but then I, was, I grew up supporting a particular club. Unfortunately, I can't tell you which one now. And it's been <laughs> like... Okay, this is what One you support. One of the two. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, 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 don't, I don't think we're going to join out old, of it. I'm just thinking, maybe, is it the old one that's no longer there? <laughs> hmm. Oh, I've seen that one too. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. But, um, yeah, so you grew up knowing that there are football clubs, but you grew up knowing. And in, for, in fact, um, the Soweto Derby was the dominant uh, player, you know, mm. when you grew up in the 80s, you knew that when that is happening, it's still as it is today. So that's what really happened. And um, sport, I just loved purely from, because I played tennis, influenced a lot by Mart Martina Navratilova at mm -hmm. the time. And, um, you know, followed the Bill Billie Jean Kings yes. and um, the one who used to slam the tennis record, McEnroe. Yeah, so, so you know, so you, you remember those eras, but equally the Olympics, uh, when we were growing up, the Olympics, you used to see them on TV and something that we could never really attain. Mm. And then swimming was really, you didn't think it was a sport. You thought it was just swimming mm. and hockey was, you were playing it at school. So you never knew that mm. there was a professional side of these things, except for the ones that were internationally acclaimed. What does your position entail as the head of stakeholder relations and communications of the PSL? My position entails to influence, influence all types of interested groups. Mm. And that starts from your supporter to your to yourselves, actually, and to our sponsors, uh, as well as the government. So people tend to think that stakeholder relations is just government relations. Government relations is just one entity of the work that you do. So business is interested in what PSL is doing. So if PSL behaves in a particular manner that makes sense to a business, then business invests in the PSL. And then government looks at what the PSL does, and again, not from a regulatory perspective, but mm -hmm. also to see that business, uh, uh, rather the PSL, operates in a manner that is following the regulations, paying its dues, paying its taxes, but equally so uh, uh, following labor rule or labor laws, as well as, you know, adhering to all sorts of Evidence. governance that yeah. uh, the country requires to. So we governed by the same statutes that govern any other business for that matter. Uh, it's arguably the biggest league on the continent, and there are so many people that contribute to making the Premier Soccer League what it actually is. Yeah. That's a lot of relationships to have to look after. It is, uh, because uh, you remember, the PSL does not have supporters per se, but the supporters that support, that support a particular club mm. are actually in turn our stakeholders. So if they are not happy with the quality of football that is being played, for instance, on TV, then they don't speak to the club, they speak to us because they say, we're not happy with us and they don't come to the game, or whatever reason that they don't do that. But also radio plays an important part because if, re if they don't hear that uh, the commentaries and the football at play, remember that not everybody has a TV. Mm -hmm. So all those people that still rely on the sound of radio would be our stakeholders as well. And it, it's quite a diverse group, but equally you have the regulators who decide certain rules or certain laws you've got to make them understand what is imperative for the business and therefore when the business decides to take a particular direction it's not taking it away because 
it just doesn't make business sense. It makes business sense for us. It makes business sense for our sponsors, which are investors. You know, investor relations is a yeah. component of, of stakeholder management. So what you then do, you must make sure that your sponsors are equally happy that their return on investment is actually for, uh, seen, seen through. How was that transition moving from the Kelly Group to the PSR being headhunted? Um, it's business. Uh, in fact, when I look at it, I looked at it as an opportunity to contribute from my business background and my communications knowledge mm -hmm. to, the peer, to the Premier Soccer League. And I thought, well, sport is evolving. You know, I, that was seven years ago, that sport is evolving into a business. And that is true that it does evolve. However, it does also, you, the quote that you mentioned by uh, Dr. Mampele Rampele, yeah. For me, it has actually left me as an island, and I can relate to it both from a racial perspective as well as a gender perspective. How so? Um, purely because it's a dominant, it's a male-dominated world. Professional mm -hmm. football is the only, firstly, the only league, and only men play there. But I never looked at it that way. I looked at it as a business opportunity. But then you realize that certain things want you to behave in a particular manner. So you can either shape in or shape out, or you can say. I will operate my way through the maze so that I make it better. But I must always make it better for the ones that are coming after me because this does not end with me. Mm. I'm just by, but one conduit to go forward. But mm. the reality is that I'm paving a way for a young girl or a young boy coming after me to say it is, inna it is possible to do this job. So, um, you know, it, it's been quite a journey, um, rewarding, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of learnings, but equally um, an opportunity that when I leave it, I will say it, it was a tick, it's done, I learned, but I've left a mark because otherwise then why do it? Mm -hmm. Do you find that you are changing those perceptions? I try. Um, you see, changing in a, a perception, you don't have to walk into the room and say, I'm the best one. True you walk into the room and claim your space properly by understanding the dynamics around you. But equally so, change is very hard. Uh, remember, we're only 25 years as a democracy. Yeah. So you can imagine that also from what the league, how it was formed, it, it's actually through blood and, and tears from a mm. lot of men that came together and yeah. said, we will do this. So you acknowledge them. You don't, you don't say, I'm throwing the baby with the bathwater. But what you do say is, let me learn from these people. Mm. If there are mistakes, these are the mistakes that I will not carry forward. Because all of us have our own mistakes. So mm. I may be perfect in this sense, but someone else is, perfect, is more perfect than me in a particular manner. So you kind of have to also learn to be a team player. But that's the, the thing about business. Business teaches you that you've got to be a team player because no business thrives on an individual. No. It, it never happened. So mm -hmm. I think my background coming from business leadership, because I was influencing policy, the directions of the companies, I was sitting at NEDLAC, oh gosh, for about 10 years, so protect, protecting and serving the interests of business so that you understand how the alliance works as NADLAC, because the reality is that it impacts on the man on the street, it impacts on us. So my background coming from a business environment has helped me, you know, carve my way through sport. Um, I thought sport was a party and it was all, mm. we were going to have fun. Yeah. We do have fun, but the people who have more fun are the ones that are kicking the ball and the, they get to lift the trophies, yeah. we just enable the environment for them to operate. Sure. I mean, Connie, it's such an exciting journey that you've had. I have so many questions, uh, one of which is regarding having to start up an entire department in a male-dominated industry coming from a different field. That could not have been easy. So looking forward to carry on that conversation with uh, Connie as she joins us right here on The Ladies Club right after this.
Welcome back. You're watching the Ladies Club. Remember, it's so easy to get in touch with us on social media. Just use our hashtag across all social media platforms, hashtag the Ladies Club. So it's time to take a look at those movers and shakers who have led the way for women in sport. And our trailblazer today is the SRSA's Chief Operating Officer, Samaya Khan. She was appointed in March 2010 and is a qual was qualified rather as an educator from the former University of Durban Westville, specializing in physical education. Absolutely. She was a, a physical education teacher for 17 years, both at primary and high school, and coached, amongst others, netball, volleyball, athletics, gymnastics, even cricket. I mean, she's been really incredible. But uh, what she stands for now is also just as amazing because she is also one of those women who are the cheerleaders and the mouthpieces of women in sports. I, 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 I do communicate with her quite often on social media platforms. And if there's anything untoward a woman in sport in particular, she does um, always... Uh, point to the right di direction as to what is the right way in, in, in approaching a, a, a problem. Uh, and speaking to our game changer, how she approaches going into a area which is male dominated mm. um, and claiming your space. What I really like about Samaya is that she goes about her business and she's incredibly professional and she has left that idea for women to follow that, you know what, go there, do your job, do it well and people will recognize. Mm. And that's something that Samaya certainly has done. I'd love to know from our game changer, Connie, who has been an inspiration for you? If you can pick out like one person, especially when it comes to your career. Um, my career, gosh, there's been many. Mm. Uh, besides my mother, which is the obvious one that every girl would say. But equally, the people around my friends. Um, I've looked, you know, what normally I do, I form a um, kind of an invisible boardroom. And I say, who is in my board? And in my board should be people that speak to me, people I can relate to, people that are smarter than me, people have worked, who have achieved more than me, and who I aim to, 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 you know, to look like. Not physically, mm -hmm. but equally from a brain perspective. The unfortunate part is that, I'll be very honest, in football there hasn't been any, mm -hmm. uh, except for men. Mm -hmm. Because um, I've looked at the chairman, of the league, and I've looked at uh, Mr. Kaiser Mutaung because, again, uh, Kaiser Mutaung, when we were growing up, he went to the US. And I remember my parents had a picture of him, it was in the newspaper, and he was boarding or was boarding a, yeah. a plane. And that is a picture that's still etched into my memory because he was making history. Uh, Jomo Sono, equally from those goals mm -hmm. that he scored, but uh, the chairman, uh, Dr. Ivan Kozab, just from a business perspective, yeah. because he looked at the journey, you know, having started as a, at 14, as a secretary of a, I don't know, league or a club, that for me was show, showing me that he had passion for what he believed in, mm. and that's one part. But I've looked at internationally also Michelle Obama is one of my inspiration p inspirational people but Gloria Sarube Pilisiu mm -hmm. uh, Mteto who's the CEO of the National Empowerment Fund um, Carol Bauer who's uh, a sister and a friend but also because when we connect we don't connect on fashion we connect on how we can make each other better and that for me is very important for any young girl growing yeah. up or any person that we shouldn't just meet to gossip about someone. I don't have the time for that. And uh, the, that's the unfortunate part is that in football, I have not seen women who support each other. In no. fact, uh, they're happy to be the queen bees. Of course. Uh, to take the crown because I'm the only one. It makes sense to be the only girl, but it actually does get very lonely. Yeah. Because you you've got no support structure. You've got no support it. structure, but you're not pulling up. Because as you pull, as we rise, we should pull up. And mm. we're not doing that. Men do that very easily. You know, I, and quicker. Very, very. Um, I look at the, um, I, I like a quote that says, men are judged by the uh, potential and women are judged by their accomplishments. So in order for me, uh, when, in fact, when I started at the league as well, it was how did she get there? Mm. Who was yeah. she? Mm. Whereas you get a young person who is 20-something years old, I have a passion for football. And that's good enough. And that's good enough. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, they're going somewhere. Yeah, no, no, he's, he, yeah. he's the next CEO. Yeah. And you're like, what makes him the next CEO? Mm. Connie, outside of the PSL, who is Connie? Um, what kind of music do you <laughs> enjoy? 
uh, the normal. I mean, I've listened to all genres. You know, really? Everything. What are you listening to now? Ooh. <laughs> now you'll surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I listen to good music, and mm. I do listen to Aretha Franklin because she Aria really molded. Yeah, yeah, it was so neat to be. Yeah, the queen has to be respected, so everybody else can come afterwards. Mm. Uh, you're also very passionate about the role that you play as the president of the South African Red Cross Society. Mm. Yeah, um, I feel I'm a philanthropist at heart. Yeah. And purely, be it was just by accident, but um, it was also a role that I take seriously because I like impacting people's lives positively. And I also love seeing the growth of humanity. I worry about what happens in politics. I worry about what happens on the business side in economics, I worry about if a child has left ho has been left homeless or mm. a child is hungry. So I'm also an, um, a member of the UNICEF Influential Women's Circle. So, and that is a circle of us coming together, changing, uh, protecting the children of South Africa. So, you know, one child at a time, we try mm. to do that. But the Red Cross is very close to my heart because we feed over about 80,000 people wow. in the country every day because uh, of the scourge of the HIV AIDS as well as the growth of, I mean, you didn't know that TB still exists. So those are the things that are very close to my heart, but also children who can't read and write. We can't have a situation like no. that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's those are kind of things that I'm trying to change positively for the better. And one child, one child at, at, a, at a time. You try to, if, if you could, but you, I wish we could wake up in a world where there is no poverty because I don't think anybody wishes to wake up in a child and in a home where there are no parents, mm. there's no food and there's no direction. So it's a worrying situation that the country finds itself in. A message to the women that are watching right now um, and they've looked at you as a source of inspiration and would want to be where you are one day. What would your advice or words of wisdom be to them? I think do your job to the best of your abilities. Uh, ignore the naysayers. They will be there, mm. especially the, the boys mm. that play in the small Leagues. field of play. Yeah, the, <laughs> the Chappies League. So the, yeah, the small there. league, yeah. yeah. But um, it's also around doing the best of your abilities and also try to focus on the positive. Uh, the world, no one cares. Mm. No one really cares about you. Don't think that people owe you anything they do not. Um, strive to be the better person and be the best version of yourself but equally so respect other people mm. respect people regardless of who they are mm. because we don't know tomorrow I may be the president of the country mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you will be saying oh by the way I was not nice to you and I'll say yes you were not <laughs> <laughs> but you know as a president you, you can't do yeah. things like that but that's the reality yeah. is that um, th you must also, we must lift as we rise. We mm. must protect each other as women. We must also raise young men who are going to be strong men in the future because otherwise the world is doomed. We're going to have a group of strong girls and weak men. Mm. And again, then you, you know, you're repeating the inequality yeah. which we can't afford to have. Mm. In 10 years' time, where is Connie going to be? Ooh. That strategy. I haven't applied it to myself, but I certainly will be doing something greater than what I'm doing right now, definitely. So watch this space is the final message from Connie Mochumi. Thank you so much for coming into studio and chatting to us. It's been an absolute pleasure and certainly been an inspiration. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my heart is so warm. But that's all the time we have for you this week. Thank you so much for spending it. Mona Mulnano Larnala, the Ladies Club. Remember, you are welcome to send us your ideas of trailblazers, stories about women in sport that inspire you at home. Remember until we meet again that greatness is always earned and never ever given. Until we meet again, keep in touch on social media. Bye-bye.